Hello, I'm Frui. I'm a librarian and a civil servant. And to my misfortune, I live in Portugal. And I say that because in the last two years, I lost 25% of my income. Why? Because Portugal is in crisis. They've been saying, when, and when I say, I say they, the bourgeoisie and the media has been, have been saying that uh, we, the Portuguese people, have been living above our um, capacities. But in fact, the ones who are living above our capacities are the same people that uh, are exploiting us. In Spain, they speak about the 1,000 euros generation, but here in Portugal, 1,000 euros is a mirage. We're speaking about 500 euros uh, generation. We have the uh, lowest salaries in Western Europe, and we buy the most expensive gasoline, we're paying uh, huge prices for electricity, transport costs have been raising uh, tremendously, and all this, all this austerity, all the measures being put down against the working class people are the demands of the Troika, the so-called Troika, the IMF, the Central Bank and the European Union. Portuguese people do not decide about uh, his, his fate. The ones who are uh, dictating the rules are the capitalists, and especially the capitalists of Europe and IMF. They are applying uh, what, are, what they are doing to, the, to this country is what they have done to Ireland and to Greece. They are applying the same recipe and obviously we will have the same result, disaster, and disaster is already taking place. Official numbers claims that uh, unemployment rate is 15%, well that's huge, that put us in the third highest unemployment rate of, uh, develop, of the so-called developed countries. Yeah, but those, are, but those are the official numbers. In fact, over 22% of the people, in of the working class people are unemployed. Uh, unemployment is between one-third, uh, gets to one-third or 40, up until 40% among uh, the youth. We've got like uh, 3 million people poor living beneath uh, the poverty line. That's one-third of the country. And as, uh, all along and as long as this takes place, what we see, we see the state government giving money to the banks. Even two months ago, they gave to the banks directly 6 billion euros. The money they do not invest in education, the money they do not invest in healthcare, the money they steal from workers, either from, from taxes or by stealing Christmas and holiday bonus, this money they are taking from us to give to bankers. So they are, and they are basing, the government is basing its policy in the belief that the Portuguese people is a quiet people, is a good people. One of IMF officials said, said it, uh, Portuguese people are to oppose to the Greek people, uh, is uh, a good people. But this good people will show to these guys, will show to these uh, robbers the good traditions that it has, the tradition of fighting, struggling and uh, kicking back uh, all these measures and all these politics, policies. Uh, one of the demands of the so-called Troika and one of the flags of the right-wingers that are in government is about privatization of, um, of public companies. Like, for instance, they have sold to Chinese capitals uh, the electri electricity company. Uh, they are prepared to sell out the, um, the airplane company. They are ready to close down the public television. And none of this as any will have any positive um, effect on the development of, on the development of the Portuguese economy. On the contrary, it will create more unemployment. It will make like the product uh, or the profits. They will not stay in the country. They will flee to the to those countries which companies are buying our our essential. Uh, industries, essential services, um, and not even the public, the people will not benefit with anything of this.
A good example of what I'm talking is about transport. Transport companies will be privatized. In the last year, the, the, the prices for uh, those services, for traveling, for traveling from home to work, for instance, uh, basic traveling. Well, for those of the costs for that, I've been raising uh, a lot. So salaries won't raise. On the contrary, they are taking us uh, our salaries. They are taking our bonuses, and prices are just going up. As a result, more and more people is getting into poverty. You just have to think. There's in reality over a million unemployed people in a country with 10 million. So. This is an uh, absolute, absolute disaster. And these policies have been uh, implemented and implemented with full, uh, in full speed ever since last year uh, occurred here in Portugal uh, government change. We are now being government, governed by uh, right-wing parties for the socialists lost the elections. And they lost the elections because they were carrying away anti-working class policies. So right-wing parties are ruling the country. They said they would, they would uh, uh, ask us for sacrifices, but at the end, the results would show up. But up until now, we are the ones, the working class is, is the force that has been taking all the sacrifices, because you don't see bankers or you don't see big capitalists uh, doing any sort of uh, sacrifices. Their incomes, their profits, they are guaranteed. And when the market, market doesn't work, well, the state and the corrupt capitalist state works the market for them. Every year, besides all their so-called recapitalization of banks, every year the state, the capitalist state, gives directly to the big companies monopolies, uh, concessions, even money for them to run uh, public, absolutely necessary uh, services. So these people suffer nothing. We are the ones who are suffering. And it's getting time for the Portuguese people and the Portuguese working class starts giving an answer. Up until now, perhaps the most um, important element of the situation is the fear. Fear of people losing their jobs, fear of people losing their houses, fear of, po of people uh, losing wages. But there's a limit to fear, and that limit ends, or the fear will end, the day people realize that without collective, united, uh, industrial action, uh, trade union action, and political action, unless people take the streets and take the fight, they will see no benefits, but more and more sacrifices, more and more injustice. We've been having some of the great demonstrations ever and we're talking in a country of 10 million 10 million inhabitants of demonstrations with 200,000 300,000 people we are talking about two general strikes we are talking about resistance in the um, in the companies resistance and fighting back in the industries and this fight is just beginning Unfortunately, unfortunately, the working class people has not, doesn't have, doesn't have a leadership that will take the fight up until the last consequences and take the fight victorious. And why do I, I why do I say this? Well, because we have in Portugal three, th what we can say like three main left wing parties: the socialists who are absolutely responsible for the situation because they were in government for the past uh, six or seven years. And yet, they are in opposition. They signed a memorandum with a, with a Troika. They sold the country to the IMF. And even now in the opposition, they do not vote against the measures this right-wing government is putting against the people. And so these guys, I mean, what, what can we say about the socialists, the so-called socialists? So we've got uh, the Socialist Party, and the Socialist Party is in big, big crisis. In spite of all discontent of the people, they are not 
uh, getting any sort of benefits according to pools. On the other hand, if the Socialist Party is the direct responsible for this situation, you've got more to the left, the left bloc and the Communist Party. Those parties are responsible in the first place for not having a united front against IMF and against the bosses. And each one of them, instead of, instead of taking the necessary first step, instead of appealing for unity, each one of them is on his own corner uh, trying just to seek some more votes, some more seats, because, um, and in sp instead of uniting, they disunite. It's, it is each one for itself. And in that aspect, the left bloc has even made some sort of uh, alliances and uh, agreements in the past, in the recent past, with the Socialist Party, which was uh, in a big way responsible for their fall on the vote cast's uh, last general uh, election. So, not only the left bloc and the Communist Party have this sectarian approach to each other, as they do not present a real concrete uh, program to change society and to change thing, the way things are going. The Communist Party uh, is uh, holding itself to nationalist positions. They speak uh, against Europe. Uh, they don't dare yet speak against Euro. And their conception of alternative is uh, of a, some sort of capitalist, uh, a national capitalism. And the national capitalism well uh, manage. No, but capitalism is not well managed. Capitalism is this. You can't manage capitalism. You have to change things. You have to break with the system. And you have to propose to the Portuguese people and to workers of Europe another alternative. The alternative is not, as left would say, it's not fighting inside European institutions. No, the alternative is to break with this conception of Europe, with this conception of Europe, and this conception of uh, austerity measures and economical and financial policies that only benefit the, the speculators, the bankers, and, well, I'm sorry, but only benefit the parasites that are living upon the, upon the people and that are profiting with people's poverty and people's suffering. So what we need, what we need here in Portugal is to take conscience that um, the right-wing government will conduct and is conducting already the country to disaster. The socialists are included in this bag because they were responsible for government, like in Spain for almost over a decade. Either by direct action, as the socialist, as the socialist party case, or by absence of a real alternative, as is the um, situation of left bloc and communist party. What we need to do, we the people, we the working class, we need to take uh, actions, we need to take the streets, we need to fight back, we need to take conscience. We need to change our trade unions, we need to change our workers' organizations and make them work for us and make them fight for us the way we must fight. Because this is not something like, uh, should, we, should we take uh, one road or another road? Because both roads, any road in the capitalist system will conduct to abyss. This is what's happening in this country. And uh, I want to finish by adding this. Um, there's the saying, like, uh, if you're not a communist at, at 20, you don't have a heart. And if you are a communist at 40, you don't have a head. Well, I'm almost 40, and let me tell you, the only reasonable way to think is think uh, the communist way. Because I'm a worker, I lost 25% of my income, and I don't know, I may, I may lose my job in two months, in two years. I mean, if the IMF gets here and says, you got to suck like 100,000 people, they will suck, unless we oppose, unless we fight back. And unless in last term we kick these guys out. So, yes, um, it makes all the sense being communist at any age and being Marxist at any age, and this is it.
we've got to spread Marxist ideas, we've got to create uh, an organization to carry these ideas to people and to make ideas practice. It's a huge challenge, not only to the working uh, class, uh, Portuguese working class people, but to all workers in Europe. But it's our only alternative.